Hi, welcome to my channel, Big Al's Do-It-Yourself, Tips and Tricks. I'm Big Al. Today we're going to talk about the hottest thing going out there, e-bike conversions. I know a lot of you people out there have mountain bikes like this one sitting in your, your garage, not being used, and you want to convert it to an e-bike. All right, well, you're going to have three options. You're going to have either go with a front hub drive motor, a mid-drive motor, or a rear hub drive motor. And I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of each one. But on this bike, I'm going to do a mid-drive conversion. And I'm going to tell you why this is a good bike to do that on. One, it's got a nice, solid aluminum frame. It's got a nice, uh, well-known manufacturer. I know they make good bikes. It's got disc brakes, okay? And they're hydraulic disc brakes, which are even better. You can go with manual pull, but being hydraulic makes it even nicer. So what I'm gonna concentrate on mainly on this uh, build is removing the crank arms and bottom bracket. The videos I watched on this, they just weren't thorough enough and didn't give you enough detail to properly remove this with the right tools. So that's what we're gonna focus on, is getting this bottom bracket out and getting this bike prepped to take a mid-drive Bafang 750 watt motor. So if you guys are ready to get this thing built and have some fun, let's do it. Okay, this is what I've been riding for the past three or four years. It's a 2018 Rad Rover. Uh, it's been a great bike. It comes with the rear hub drive, the Bafang 750 watt. Uh, I really like it, but it's just not good for single track. It's just really heavy. The tires are really big. So that's why I chose this Scott. Now let's walk over here and look at this. Uh, so I can show you a couple things on here. The first thing, I'm going to give you a big Al bonus tip. And that's why I had this front wheel on here. These tires and tubes were really dry rotted, so I took them off. But while I had it out uh, like this, I decided to go ahead and true up my, my rims. And you just take a zip tie and, and zip it to your fork and just let it barely touch that rim. And then when you turn this wheel, you can see how true or how untrue it is. And there's tons of videos on how to true up your wheel. If you just go really slow and pay attention, it's very simple to do and it'll keep it from getting worse and worse. So the main reason I got you guys here is getting this bottom bracket out. So let me show you what to do. You might wanna take a couple of notes because first thing on the left side, you gotta remove this pedal and it is reverse thread. So you turn it in to remove it, okay? To take it out. So this is reverse thread. On the driver's side where the chain, uh, chain is, that's going to be normal, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. All right, let's get into this crank arm off. Takes an eight millimeter hex head. You just run this out. It really doesn't do a whole lot, but here's where the problem is. If you order this kit from Omer, it's a crank and bottom bracket remover. They'll send you these three items here. This does not work on a Shimano that does not have this cassette. If you look right in here, you'll see that to remove this crank, it needs to press on the inside here. It can't go all the way through because there's nothing for it to push on. So this has nothing to push on once you thread it in. Makes sense? So what you have to do is use this for part tool. And this part right here will actually push on this, thus allowing that crank arm to come off. And this part two for the, uh, for the Shimano crank, that Shimano FC M430 crank uses this part tool number CWP7. It's called a crank arm puller, and I'll put it up on, on the site, but it's the CWP crank arm puller. Basically, all you gotta do is just thread this in here like this. All right, once you get it threaded in there, you just wanna snug it up just a little bit, and then you'll take your wrench and just turn this in, and that will push this crank arm off the bottom bracket, just like that. Do the same on the other side, and now you've got this bottom bracket exposed, and that's where this 20 spline bottom bracket removal tool will come into play. And you'll see, all these little keyed splines that go all the way around, this will line up to it. You've got to make sure it's seated in there and it's seated in there tight because you can strip that out if you're not careful. 
This one will turn lefty-loosey to remove it. On the other side, it's going to be completely opposite. You'll have to turn it righty-tighty to loosen it, okay? So just remember that, or you'll definitely strip it on the uh, pedal side, on the crank side. So once again, on the left side, it looses this way. On the right side, it looses this way, okay? All right, so we're going to get this bottom uh, bracket assembly out. All right, we've made a little progress on this conversion. We've got our tires and new tubes on. We've uh, installed the speed sensor, got some of the wiring installed, coming up to our display up here. The uh, brake lever cutoffs have been added. All that's good, ready to go. But I told you earlier, I was going to talk to you about the three types of motors you can get for these e-bike conversions. Up here on the front, you can get the front hub motor, which is quick and easy to install, but you really need a strong fork to carry that motor. And also keep in mind that it's going to tend to pull you, especially in turns if you, if you throttle up, and it could even cause that front tire to spin. So just keep that in mind. Back here in the rear hub motor, you've got your choice of 250, 500, 750, 1,000 on up. Uh, once you go over 750 watt motor, that axle is going to be a lot bigger, so you may have trouble with it fitting in this dropout. You may have to drill it out or file it, which obviously compromises the integrity of this frame. So just keep that in mind if you want to go over 750 watts. Uh, that's why we chose this mid-drive. It's just uh, you got to have a strong frame for the mid-drive, too. You notice these wells are perfect. They're wide, and it's a very nice job. And let me tell you something quick about the mid-drive motor versus the 750 watt Bethang motor. If you're wanting torque, you're wanting to climb with this bike, uh, the Bethang 750 watt rear is 80 newton meters of torque, all right? On that Bethang I showed you on, on the uh, Rad Rover, that rear motor is eight, 80 newton meters. On this one, it is 160 newton meters. Huge difference. So you're going to get a lot of climbing power out of the same size motor on the mid-drive as you would back here on a rear hub drive. But let's talk about this mid-drive motor real quick. Uh, there's a group on YouTube called Cyberbikes. The guy is awesome. He walks through the full install on this mid-drive motor. I encourage you to watch him. Cyberbikes uh, conversion on the 750 watt. His biggest concern, and I agree, is... When you put this motor in, you do not want this gear drive housing to touch this uh, chain stay. It'll damage it, especially when you start torquing things down in its final position. So to fix that, it's a quick and easy fix. Let's just show you right here. You can go to Amazon or whatever, wherever, and get these uh, spacers. This 35 millimeter inside diameter, 42 millimeter outside diameter. You can pick up those find the thinnest one that works for your application and they just slide down right over here and give you that space that you need. If you do too much, you're going to mess up your offset on your, your chain guides and your chains going back to the rear cassette. So I went ahead and kind of cut to the chase and to eliminate that problem, I bought this leaky uh, bling ring. It's got a nice offset. The, it's cut in such a way that it prevents the chain from jumping. So this is really a really nice upgrade. It's expensive, but it'll give you peace of mind and keep that chain on for you. All right, so let's get this motor installed. Okay, guys, real quick, when putting these cranks back on, I'm gonna give you a big owl tip. Get yourself a torque wrench because they're requiring 35 to 40 Newton meters. And it's really hard to tell how much that is because what you're doing is you're forcing, I'm sorry, you're forcing this crank back down to that tapered shaft so it takes a lot to do it but uh this is what this is what 40 feels like right here <clears throat> that was a lot 
So make sure that you get your torque wrench for this part and also use some Loctite on those threads and you'll be good to go. Okay guys, this is going to wrap up this e-bike conversion on this 2012 Scott 29er. Uh, all the safety checks have been cleared. This bike is ready for some single track. We are in Winder, Georgia at Fort Yargo State Park. Some of the best single track you can find and I'm telling you, with this upgrade, I feel like I'm 30 years younger. This has been awesome. I'm 67, but today I feel like I'm 37. Now I'm riding it without making any adjustments, but if you want to tweak the controller, you can order this cable and you can make all your uh, changes that way, but I'm gonna see how I like it set up from the factory and then we're gonna go from there. So let's start hitting some single track and remember, the best part is doing it yourself. So until next time, we'll see you. <music>